Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video. Today I'm going to be going over 15 unique or unknown money making methods. Now because of this the prices will be kind of unstable. Before you do any of these methods you will always want to double check that the margin or the prices related to it are still accurate. These methods are going to be covering a wide range of level requirements. Some of them will be really low level methods and some of them will be higher level methods. There's a little bit of everything for everyone here. I hope you guys enjoy and let's get started. First up here is a really simple money making method. You will not need any high requirements, it's only going to require the level 2 enchant spell. To cast level 2 enchant you will need a cosmic rune, 3 air runes, or an air staff, as well as level 27 magic. So all you need to do is buy emerald necklaces on the grand exchange, you obviously want to check the margin first. We're going to be converting them into binding necklaces and selling them back. So we'll go ahead and claim this offer here. So all you will need is cosmic runes in your inventory as well as 27 more of the emerald necklaces. So from here we're going to go ahead and enchant every single one of them and on each one we're going to make around at 300 GP which is pretty good for the level it requires to do this method. Now it might take a little while to buy the emerald necklaces on the Grand Exchange, but, but people do use it as a crafting training method so it really will not take that long. I'd recommend putting an offer in for a pretty large batch of them as most people will be doing a couple hundred or even thousand at once and you might not get another offer come through for another half an hour or something. So we've gone ahead and completed the inventory and if we sell them for 1200 each that means we'll be able to sell them for 32k per inventory and it looks like we instantly sold some as well so that's nice. So in total we're getting a margin of around 306 and we can do around 1500 of these an hour if you're paying attention which means we're going to make around 450k an hour creating these binding necklaces and we already sold them off for 1200 Again, this is going to depend quite a bit on the margin but a really good introductory money making method if the margin is there. Okay, coming in at number two is a really interesting uh, money making method and it does not have a very high requirement, actually really none. However, having 42 construction will make this a lot easier. You could always go into someone else's house for this, however, I would just recommend getting 42 construction to make it quite a bit simpler. So what we're going to be doing is converting elemental staves into uh, different alignments. If we have a look on the Grand Exchange, the Staff of Water is worth quite a bit more than any of the other elemental staves. It's worth 1700 where the other ones are worth, well, 1000 or 1150. The only one I wouldn't recommend buying currently is the Staff of Air. So let's go ahead and claim as many of the Staffs of Earth as we can and as many of the Staffs of Fire as we can. So from here I'm using a Rune Pouch, however this really isn't necessary if you have House Teleport Tablets that'll work as well. And I'm also bringing a Ring of Dueling to teleport back to a bank. So from here we're going to teleport to my house. We're going to run down to the study and that's where you're going to build the crystal ball. From here you're going to use the staffs of earth on there and you're going to turn them into water staffs, which is the fourth option. Kind of looks like I'm having a seizure every time I do this. But yeah, it's a really simple method. Right now we're getting 600 to 700 GP on each one that we do, which at the rate I was normally going, I was going to maybe get around a thousand done in an hour. It's a little click intensive because you have to keep right clicking and use it. So let's head back to Castle Wars and we'll go ahead and price check this inventory. So currently the inventory is worth 47k once we've converted them to staffs of water. And a full inventory of staffs of fire is only worth 26k. So we made 20k on the inventory or around 700k an hour, which is very good considering the requirement. Coming in at number 3 is completing farming contracts. As some of you may know, the farming guild is one of my favorite new updates. And one of the most profitable parts of this guild is completing farming contracts. Farming contracts are really easy to complete. You will need at least level 45 farming to get into the farming guild. And the money you can make from this is going to scale quite a bit on what your farming level is. On this account here, I'm only level like 50 farming, so I'm only doing easy contracts. On average, you get around 20k to 25k for easy contracts, around 50k for medium contracts and around 75k for hard contracts. It used to be more but the prices of the new seeds have dropped by quite a bit. So all you need to do is come over to Guildmaster Jane, go down to contract, she will give you a certain crop that you have to grow. So currently I have potatoes extremely easy so all I would do is come over here and grow potatoes in the allotment patch and we'd be good to go. Unfortunately they died so that's kind of sucky. Now every time you complete a farming contract you will get these seed packs. Each seed pack contains around 10 different seeds. You will have a chance of getting pretty much every seed in the game. Some of them being worth quite a bit like magic seeds or U seeds or the new dragon fruit seed. While you could technically get any seed at any contract level you're much more likely to get higher level seeds with higher level contracts. I've only ever gotten one U seed from a low level contract so far. So all you have to do is open them up and you'll see you'll get a ton of different seeds. We got some willow seeds in there, some snake grass seeds are worth quite a bit. Now you can get renar seeds and other herb seeds as well. If we go have a look and price check this inventory, it's actually worth 130k. What is worth there? Oh wait, so we got a torso seed. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's my first torso seed on this account. And we'll finish claiming it. And yeah, there's just a good amount of money you can make doing this. Really easy to do, especially for easy level contract. A lot of them only take like 20 or 30 minutes to grow. So you can do this every 20 or 30 minutes. Having an alt specifically for this wouldn't even be a terrible idea. It's a really easy way to make money. I'd recommend trying them out. 
Coming in at number 4 is another really interesting method, and that is creating Bottled Dragon Breath. Now, Bottled Dragon Breath is something that you can buy on the Grand Exchange for around 15k that will instantly recharge your Dragonfire Shield or other shields like it. To create it, you need to use 10 Dragon Fruits on a vial and then charge it in Mount Karum. Currently, I bought the Dragon Fruits for 800 GP each, which means we're going to make around 7k on each Bottled Dragon Breath. Now, before you get too excited here, the Bottled Dragon Breaths do not sell very much on the Grand Exchange. Every day, only between 50 and 100 are traded per day, so I would not make more than 50 at a time before trying to sell them. So all you need to do is withdraw a bunch of dragon fruit, make sure you use it on the vial instead of eating it, and it'll automatically make two of them. I'm just going to keep doing this until I've done all of them in my inventory. It's kind of interesting they decided to give this an automatic creation, but so many other things not. Okay, and here's the last one here. So there we go, we've created 10 bottled dragon breath. Now that's not all, you could try selling these on the ground exchange, but they would go much slower than the charged versions. And what you need to do is use the bottled dragon breath on this solver vent over here. You will take two points of damage every time, so you will need a little bit of food if you're doing this for an extended period of time. Uh, but you really shouldn't need it too badly. So each one we're going to make around 7k on, so that's quite nice. So off of these 10, we're going to make 70k. Now again, the problem with this is they sell very, very slowly. I'll go try instantly selling one in the Grand Exchange just to see what the price will sell at. Okay, here we are at the Grand Exchange. We'll go ahead and sell the uh, Bottled Dragon Breath. Let's see what it sells for. 12k, so well, we still profited actually... 4k on that not bad really we'll go ahead and try selling them all for 12k i'm gonna continue doing this maybe that's actually a very good margin regardless you can see here i bought the dragon fruits for 800 each or 80k in total and we sold them for 120k with like a few minutes work that is very good i'd call this more of a daily money making method you could probably get four or 500k in just a few minutes Okay, coming in at number four is exchanging impling jars at Puro Puro. Now, this method has a higher requirement. However, you can do it with less. It is recommended that you have access to Slayer Rings. However, if you don't have it, you can teleport to Edgeville instead and go to that fairy ring. However, this will slow down your profit per hour a bit. So what I'm bringing is a rune pouch with teleport runes back to either Varrock or your house, as well as nine baby impling jars. Now, you can buy these on the Grand Exchange. They are the cheapest generally to buy. However, you can do this with any impling jar. Right now, I'm buying them for 2,200 each. However, if you find a cheap Deeper impling jar, you can buy that one as well. The baby impling jars are the most consistent, however, the only actual requirement for this is 17 Hunter. So once you have 9 baby impling jars as well as a teleport runes, you're going to want to teleport to the Relica Slayer Cave, or if you don't have access to this, just run from Edgeville to the Fairy Ring. From here, we're going to run over to the Fairy Ring and teleport to Zanaris. Once we're in Zanaris, we're going to run over here to the Wheat Field and enter Puro Puro. Okay, once we're in Puro Puro, we're going to look for a guy called Enlock Inquisitor. And we're going to trade him. Let's go ahead and do a price check before we start here. So it's worth around, let's say I got him for around 18k in total. We're going to go down to the Impling Jar section and hit OK. And then we're just going to repeat that nine times. Each one that we exchange, we're going to make around 1k on. So really decent money considering that the requirement for this is really only 15 Hunter. And there we go, we've done the ninth one here, and we have a full inventory of Impling Jars. Now, the Impling Jars sell on the Grand Exchange for over 1k each normally. So on that one inventory, we made around 10k in profit. You can get more or less depending on the prices. Right now, we're going to get around 400 to 500k an hour, which is pretty decent considering the level requirement. Coming in at number 6 is another really easy money making method and it has really no requirements. All you need to do is buy a few items on the Grand Exchange and that is the Adamant Javelin as well as the Rune Javelin. Now you could try doing this with the Mithril Javelin as well, however the profit is going to be quite a bit less. Now what we're going to be doing is buying Javelins off of the Grand Exchange and selling it to the Squire in the Archery Shop at Pest Control. So if we go to the Void Knights Archery Store, we can see how much they actually buy the Rune Javelins for, and that's 240 GP each. And on the Grand Exchange, we bought them for 150. And he buys the Adamant Javelins for 96 GP each, and we bought them for 44 GP each on the Grand Exchange. So once we go ahead and sell 50, the price is going to reduce a bit. He'll buy them for 220, still profitable though. And honestly, you could sell another 50. Depends how much money you have to work with here. For the Adamant Javelins, we're going to do something similar, sell 50 and maybe sell another 50. Now you could probably go all the way down to 200 if you wanted and still be profitable. We'll do another 50 just for the video. And after that, all you're gonna do is go ahead and hop to another world. Now, if you're a higher total level, that is always gonna be helpful because you have access to uh, total level worlds because otherwise it's gonna take a while for the javelin to disappear. Let's hop to a non-skill total world and just see if there's any in stock there. Uh, yeah, we can see here that somebody else is doing it. So it's kind of a popular method. We'll go ahead and sell another 50. Now, one problem is you may get disconnected from hopping worlds too much. Not a huge issue. Just slow down a little bit or sell maybe an extra 50 per world. Or otherwise, you could bring maybe some Alk runes or something if you get really bored. Now, the potential profit here is extremely high because the margin between the ground exchange and the shop can vary quite a lot. For example, I bought all of my javelins for 195k and right now we have 290k. That's such an insane money-making method. So this method is probably over 1.5 mil an hour currently because that only took me maximum a few minutes. 
Now coming up next is an extremely easy money making method, however it does have a higher requirement and that is 81 farming to grow a dragon fruit tree. Now currently dragon fruits are worth anywhere between 800 GP and 1k each and they do regenerate after a certain period of time. So while the dragon fruits are a little expensive to grow every time you harvest uh, the dragon fruits you get 6 I believe you'll get around 6k. It's really easy to do, doesn't cost you anything, and it doesn't really take that long to do a dragon fruit tree run. I'm just going to do one live as I am speaking. Now the requirements for this are quite a bit higher. You will need, like I said, 81 farming as well as quite a few different transportation methods. However, considering how easy it is to do, I think it's worth putting on here. It's a little unusual because not a lot of people do it. So I'm just going to my closest four farming patches because I think it's more efficient than running to the one in Karamja. Or any of the ones that take longer to get to. So if we do a price check on just a forgery run, we're making around 36k. Not groundbreaking, but really easy to do and decent money. Probably one of the easiest flips is actually creating toxic blowpipes. They very consistently give like 50 to 60k in profit, and the only requirement for making them is 53 fletching, which is actually very low considering it's fletching. So right now I managed to buy the Tanzanite Fang for 6 mil and 17k. All you need to do is use the chisel on the Tanzanite Fang, you'll get a toxic blowpipe uncharged, and you can go ahead and sell that right away back on the Grand Exchange. The toxic blowpipes are very expensive, so you want to make sure the margin is correct before you do this, but I instantly sold it for 6 mil and 45k. Alright, we're going to cancel it, but we got one more coming through. So we just crafted the last one here, and we'll sell this for 6 thousand and 45k as well. So we need one more, making around 30k, so that was just the quickest 90k of my life. That took like 3 minutes and like barely any thought. I would highly recommend doing this, because the margin is generally somewhere between 30k and 100k. It doesn't take any time, the only requirement really is money. Coming in at number 9 is a really easy money making method and that is buying items from the stonemason shop. Now you will need to complete the giant dwarf quest to access here but the main requirement here is money. Currently if you buy the marble blocks or the gold leaves from the stonemason shop you're going to get about 3k in profit by selling them back on the grand exchange. So what you need to do is buy one in each world and then hop worlds. Now the big problem here is these items are very expensive. The gold leaves cost 130k, the marble blocks cost even more. You want to make sure you don't hit buy 5 because that's going to waste a lot of money. Essentially you're just going to hop between a bunch of different worlds, keep doing this, and each world you're going to get about 6k in profit. Now again the money per hour here is going to vary quite a lot, however generally you will get around 1 mil an hour if you have the funds to sustain it for that long. Again one major drawback is that you will disconnect after hopping between a certain amount of worlds in five minutes. So there's a few different techniques here. You can either speed through a full inventory, wait a few minutes, and then continue, or just go at a slower pace. So full inventory costs around six mil, so it's very expensive. However, on the 26 items, I'm looking to make around 75K. It's a very consistent method, and I would recommend it. Last up here is going to be casting super glass make. Now this is a very high intensity method and it does have a few higher requirements. One is you need access to the lunar spellbook. You will also need level 77 magic. However the potential rewards from this are extremely good. For one you can get around 50k an hour crafting experience along with around 30k magic. And on top of that you can profit a decent amount per hour. Sometimes upwards of 500k to 600k an hour. Now there's kind of two different ways to do this. I'm going to be using giant seaweed and buckets of sand. So what you want to do is withdraw 18 buckets of sand and 3 giant seaweeds. So from here you want to cast the super glass make spell. Now every time you cast it, there will be some molten glass that ends up on the ground. Now there's two different ways you can do this. You can either pick it up or you can just leave it, depending on whether you want better experience rates or better money per hour. Obviously, if you leave it on the ground, you can be losing a bit of money per hour. So if your goal is money, I would recommend picking it up, even though it is kind of a pain and very awkward. But yeah, really excellent method, kind of high intensity, so I wouldn't recommend doing it for a long period of time, but really good for crafting, magic training, and money. Anyway guys, that is it for the video. I hope you learned something. If you did, don't forget to leave the video a like, and I will see you next time.